Today I'm going to teach you how to use your massage gun to do an advanced hip flexor mobilization. Working from home nowadays is a reality for the majority of us and which means that we are not moving as much and we are not going out and about. So we are spending more time at our desks, whether we are sitting down or standing. The key word here is that we're not moving enough. And because we're not moving enough, things inevitably start to get stiff and tight. Today I'm using the Deep 4S from Reathlet and we're gonna use with the ball shaped head only. And I always have a smooth surface of contact with the ball on my hips, and then because this, uh, the the default head from Reathlete, which is this um, ball-shaped head, it's a little bit softer than the other brands, so I can move into the hip and around the hip bone area without going through the risk of either injuring myself or bruising myself with the device. Today I'm actually teaching you how to anchor the loop band on the floor, and if you take a look at my setup over here, I've got pair of Y belts which are rubber coated and I also have a 20 kg dumbbell so this is not only it's heavy but because it's rubber coated it's going to grip a little bit more on the floor so if I grab the band and I pull it out like this it's not going to move before you start the technique test your setup test your anchor point just to make sure that the le the blue band doesn't come loose during the technique and here we go what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to relax my quad I'm not trying to create a tension on it. I'm, I'm going to do this standing and I'm just going to go up and down through the quad area trying to warm up the area. So the high speed of frequency of percussion and also the speed glide which is meaning I'm moving the device up and down will means that I'm starting to improve blood circulation to the air starting to make those fluids around there to move and I'm starting to get the, the muscle tissue warmed up. First I'm going to start with the quads area, just getting a little bit of warm there. I'm going to spend maybe 60 seconds to 90 seconds moving up and down until I feel that warmth sensation. So the muscle does start to become a little bit warmer. Is that because of the increased blood circulation to the area? And once I feel that warm sensation, then I move up into the TFL spend a little bit of time over here as much as I need to feel that warm sensation. There you go. I feel that that should be enough. Now I'm feeling a little bit warmer. Now I'm going to go into the setup on the band. So I'm going to turn my device on. I'm going to put it on the floor for a little bit. Anchor my leg down and I'm going to bring the band right to the top, under my glute, to the top part of the hamstring area, really high up. I'm going to take back into the lunging position. Now I'm just going to lunge down. So I'm going to look for that comfy area of my mat because my knee is going to spend a lot of time there on the floor. I want it to be as comfortable as possible. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm not even going to use the gun yet. I'm just going to move myself into a good neutral position. So often common mistake what people do is they try to push their legs forward too much then they arch their back, they flare their ribcage. So they're not in a good neutral spinal position. I want to be in a better position, so I'm going to pull back a little bit on that stretch. I'm going to tuck my tailbone in, make sure my rib cages are in, tuck my tummy in, and now I'm trying to stay in a good neutral position, or as good as I can for the start. Now, so what the band is doing, the band is doing a little bit of a distraction, and what it what that means is that the band is pulling into a counter force to the to the stretch. So. It's creating space within the joint. So it's opening up those tissues. It's helping opening up those tissues. It's helping to create the bone joints to actually move a little bit away from each other and create some space, which allows that structure to now start to feel that there is space to move. And once you feel it now, okay, now I'm in a good position. I feel that little pull, that pulling sensation, that stretching sensation on the front of my thigh, right about to the top of the hip bone, around the iliopsoas area. Now I'm actually gonna start to work with the massage gun. So again, same thing I do, turn on the device, go into the max speed. And why do we use the max speed? We want to, uh, we want as much percussion and vibration possible into the tissue because we're now, we're just trying to tone down the pain receptors on the body, or in theory, we're trying to tone down the pain receptors. 
So now I'm going to allow my body to move a bit forward until I feel that extra pulling sensation. Not too much. It needs to be bearable. I'm going to hold that position for a little while. And now I'm going to use my device to scan to where that pulling sensation comes up. So I start to feel a little bit on the top, around the iliopsoas area, right in front of my hip bone. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time. So as you can see, I'm actually not pulling, I'm not putting too much um, pressure into it. Um, I'm just touching the surface of the skin. I'm not trying to dig deep into the muscle tissue. And that's particularly important. If you dig deep into this position, it's going to be too painful. And I really just want to manage pain and allow my body to move into that position. So now I feel that it moved away a little bit as I move forward. So I now I feel it a little bit more on my TFL. And I don't know if you guys can pick this up from the camera. Uh, as I scan these uh, pulling sites, these tight spots, I actually start to move a little bit more to the front. So my body starts to ease into the position. And that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking to ease into the position. At the same time, I'm focusing on my breathing. I'm not doing much of the breathing because I'm talking through the technique. And again, now I feel that it moved up a little bit more to the front, right to the quad area. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there and I just accidentally touch the front and I speed it down so let me put that speed up again and now I feel that it's there 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 I go I'm I feel that pulling sensation now a little bit more on the IT band you will you will notice that pulling session sensation starts to move around so what I want to do is I want to use the device to look for those spots and just give them a little bit of stimulus to tone them down now I think that I'm pretty much at my end range with maintaining good neutral position obviously so i feel that i'm at my end range now what i'm going to start to do i'm going to start to mobilize look now take a look at this i'm going to move my arm up and pull forward a little bit come back move forward and back so creating a little bit of extension with movement i just i don't want to just hold that position so i move i do run about maybe 10 reps of this and now I actually move in lateral flexion with overhead position on my arm. Move up and down. I do another 10 reps and I try to move forward each time I go. And now I'm going to add another thing, which is rotations. I'm going to rotate, move in, move into opposite directions, be creative with movement, and just mobilize the hip and spine at the same time with different ranges. Remember that the more you move, the better you get at it. And I will see you on the next video.